All right, the Foster Farms Bowl, Joe. It uh, brings us Utah, 19th in the country at 8-4, and four, a team that um, – I don't want to say that they didn't play well down the stretch. I caught the Colorado game. They were within a possession. They had a turnover that turned into a uh, fumble recovery for the touchdown for the the Buffs that really turned that game around. They had a chance to win uh, taking on Indiana. Unfortunate situation here because this program over the last two years has looked like it's finally ready to turn the corner in the Big Ten. They are taking the likes of Ohio State at Michigan, and this year defeating Michigan State, uh, taking Penn State to a one-score game until it was late in the game and actually had a lead in the second half. But unfortunately, Kevin Wilson, um, mistreatment of players, so a non-football-related situation. He's gone, and it's uh, Utah taking on Indiana with uh, the defensive coordinator stepping up as uh, the new head coach. Yeah, this is an intriguing battle because I like Indiana here. I think they have the ability to really move the football on Utah. It's another contrast in styles. Indiana has shown the propensity to run a low-scoring game like they did on the road in Ann Arbor against Michigan and almost play Michigan toe-to-toe in that battle. They lost that matchup but played a very good game plan against the Wolverines. And then they could play a high up-tempo attack like they did against Penn State. So I think they're built both both ways. I think the way you have to beat Utah is over the top. You have to challenge their secondary. And over the last three years now, Utah struggled with speed teams on their schedule. So Utah, Indiana does have those type of playmakers with wide receiver Ricky Jones, Divine Redding at the running back position. They have a big play quarterback in Lego. I think they can challenge this secondary. Again, it's going to be which team can dictate tempo. When you look at Indiana, the one knock on them overall is turnover margin. They're minus seven in turnover margin entering this ballgame. That's an issue in these bowl games. You want teams that can create turnovers and run the football effectively. They're very good against the run, though, especially in the Big Ten, only giving up around 152 rushing yards per game. I think they could shut down Joe Williams and make Troy Williams beat them over the top. I think this is a close game. I think Utah wins, but I think it's very, very close, a lot closer than the experts think. I like Indiana to be in this game from start to finish, but I call it for Utah to win this game by about three points. Yeah, Utah certainly doesn't scare anyone on the outside. Uh, Patrick's a nice receiver. Uh, I saw them again in the Colorado game, and – The lack of a passing attack, the lack of a dynamic playmaker on the outside usually limits Utah, but they are extremely uh, strong in the front seven. Typically, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if the Hoosiers have enough muscle in the front seven. This is a very different Indiana program than it was just a couple years ago. They don't get pushed around. They don't miss tackles. They don't bowl coverages. It's a sound defense much more so than really anything we've seen out of Indiana since the early 1990s, and that's the last time they went back to -to back-to-back bowl games in 1990 and in 